everyone clap be proud of me because I deleted Twitter off my phone and therefore I'm just not on Twitter that often anymore. Yay! But however, I am still on Twitter and I saw something on Twitter that made my skin crawl and we're gonna talk about it. There's a book that's going around right now and it, it's being reprinted because I think it originally was published in 2016, but now it's being reprinted to, you know, one of those inconspicuous covers that's like very vague. You just, you can't tell what kind of book it is. You know, you know the type of book I'm talking about. How like a lot of the romance books now have like those cartoon covers, whatever, or sometimes there's not even cartoon covers. It's just like flowers. It's very low key. Generally speaking, I'm okay with low-key covers. That's not where my issue is. In fact, I think the cover of the book may be the only part of the book that I'm okay with. So there's a book that's flying around. It's called Torn by Carrie and Cole. I want to talk about this book because Jesus fucking Christ, pardon my French, this book is crazy and not crazy in like a wow, what a roller coaster, what a ride. I, I, I have chills. This was such a thrill. Let's go again. No, this is crazy as in somebody needs to find this person and put them in a psych ward and check their hard drives. Not only did I read the cute little blurb that's on the that's going viral from the back of the book explaining what the book's about, not only did I read that, I read the book. Because here's the thing about forbidden romances, because that's what this is. This book is a forbidden romance. We'll get into the forbidden part in a second. A lot of people who justify certain types of forbidden romances, they say, well, you didn't read the book. You're just judging it based off of a few key details, but it all makes sense in context. It's all okay with context. So I read the context because I didn't want people coming after me saying that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about when it came to the book. No, I read all 400 plus pages of this damn book. By the way, 400 pages, way too long. Virtually nothing happens, I'm going to be honest. Nothing in this book that it... I'll get to that in a second. The book is bad. It's terrible. And I'm going to say this right now, and I will justify myself later in the video, but I'm going to say this right now. If you walk away from this book and you're like, I liked this book and I see nothing wrong with it, you're weird and 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 you're creepy and you're weird and I'm scared of you and I hope you don't live anywhere near school. Oh! <laughs> like, like, I'm gonna be so honest with you. I was very, very nervous making this video because I did not want the Forbidden Romance girlies to come after me trying to justify. I'm not, I, I'm gonna be honest. What am I scared of? I'm scared of people who, who know the law a little too closely when it comes to certain things. You know a little too much about the Romeo and Juliet clause. Weird. You are really eyeballing the age of consent in every city, every state. Oh, you really love the number 18 so much. The things that they're suddenly experts about when it comes to, in, in a legal sense, I'm like, I'm very nervous for you. You scare me. Let's read the blurb from on the back of the book so you can finally figure out what I'm talking about. By the way, this book has a, an endorsement from Penelope Douglas. And if you know anything about Penelope Douglas, I think Penelope, Penelope's most famous work, I wanna say, this is the only book I've read of hers too, um, is Credence, which is about a girl who gets with her step uncle and step cousins. Hmm. Do what you want with that information. Let's talk about Torn by Carrie and Cole. When I was five years old, I told Tor and Grace we were going to get married someday. He'd been my closest friend, my protector, and my rock since the day that I was born. But during my senior year, our relationship slowly changed. Silly conversations morphed into serious heart-to-hearts. Innocent friendship turned to stolen glances. Then one day, an unexpected kiss changed everything. While that kiss was all I'd ever dreamed of, it knocked Tor clear off his axis. His strong moral compass makes it impossible for him to accept our feelings for each other because not only am I 18 and 15 years younger than him, I'm the one person he should never ever want. Tor is my father's best friend, my pseudo uncle. Neither of us can stand to betray or hurt my dad, but we can't keep our relationship hidden forever. Will there be a way for us to find our happily ever after or will we be all torn apart. Oh, how tragic. I know a thing or two about tragedies. I read Romeo and Juliet. These aren't star-crossed lovers. This is just creepy. So if you didn't catch that while reading the synopsis, she falls in love with the man who helped raise her since birth. She, he was there since birth. He babysat her. He 
helped raise her since birth and now they're together. Do you see where my eyes start twitching? I'm getting anxious because this is, ooh. Okay, let's talk about the book now because just based off of that blurb alone, I'm terrified, but I also read the book. So let's talk about the book. You have to hear this intro paragraph. This is page 15 of the book. The very first chapter talks about Asher. Asher's the father of Kenzie, who is the 18 year old girl that the dude gets with, okay? So Asher and Ember have this baby girl named Kenzie. Their best friend in the whole wide world, Torin Grace, was there at launch day. He was there since birth. This is what Torin has to say about Kenzie from the day she was born. Again, Torin's the uncle. At that moment, a connection was born. That was it. She owned me, my niece, my goddaughter. Yeah, I forgot to mention, not only is he a pseudo uncle, he is also the godfather. Another cherry on top of that shit sandwich. What kind of a sandwich has cherries on top? A shitty one. Cheers to that. Okay, my niece, my goddaughter, the love of my life. So what now? I would pray that when, because here's the thing, I think Asher and Ember had Kenzie when they were 15. So they had the baby when they were 15 years old. That's why he is 15 years older than Kenzie. I would hope that 15 year old Torin isn't holding his little goddaughter, his little niecey niece. I would pray that he wasn't thinking about her potentially being the love of his life. I would put, I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Okay, I will give, I will give you that. I'm almost positive that's not what he was thinking when she was born, but I don't like that that's now how he views that moment. How many people could say that they were there the second that their wives were born? Too many, but not enough for it to be a concern to people, apparently. That's page 15. That's the beginning of the book. <laughs> I say that there's not really a lot of plot in this book because I'm gonna be honest, what's happening in the book other than their relationship? happening, blossoming, nothing. Nothing's happening. There's not even like a subplot. There's like not even an A story and a B story. Like it's really, it's just them slowly falling for each other. And then a bunch of random stuff happens in the middle. The only thing that happens in the book is just Torin having like a mental breakdown at the thought of him being attracted to his niece and trying to fight the urge. Kenzie's just, she's vibing. She's like, I want my uncle. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Can I read this to you? Can I read this? I feel like this, this, this paragraph right here, it really sums up the entirety of this book. Okay, this is Torin speaking here. Well, he's not speaking, it's like in his head. Anyway, he says, no, I can't think about that. Thinking about that makes me feel sick and twisted. I can't think about shoving my cock huh? into her mouth one minute and then remember rocking her to sleep when she was a baby the next. I'm losing my mind. I feel, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Clearly this is a forbidden romance between pseudo uncle godfather and pseudo niece god daughter. Now let's talk about forbidden romances as a whole. Now I don't read many or any really forbidden romances. The only other forbidden romance that I have read is the book that I mentioned earlier, Credence by Penelope Douglas. Again, it's about a girl who gets with her step uncle and step cousin. Spoiler alert, she ends up getting with one of the cousins at the end of the day. I'm not gonna tell you who, that doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Now I'm gonna be honest. I thought Credence was bad until I read this book and I was like, why are you making Credence look like an angel in this story? Because here's here are the differences between Credence and Torn. So in Credence, right, step uncle, step cousins. The step, you know, it gives people, it, it helps people with that cognitive dissonance of, on the fact that they're supposed to be related, right? It, it, it helps alleviate some of that because, well, they're not related by blood. So it's not biologically incest, big fucking whoop. So that's one thing. The second thing is that the main character in Credence, the girl, I think her name, I can't remember her name, I'm sorry. The main girl, she isn't introduced to these step uncles and step cousins until she is 17 turning 18 very, very soon because that's what, that's another thing I've noticed. Why can't they just be like, just be 18, just be 18 from the jump. Why does there need to be this whole, you know what? I know exactly why there needs to be. I, I know the answer, I know the answer, but at the same time, it's like, why can't they just be 18? Since we care about the law so much around here all of a sudden, why can't they just be 18 from the cuff? I feel like that can alleviate some of the issues that some people have with forbidden romances. Some of it, not, not all of it, but it, it helps a little bit. Not enough, 
but it helps a little. She doesn't know that these step uncles and step cousins even exist until she's 17 going on 18. And so because they didn't know her as a child and didn't grow up with her, da 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 da, da I feel like th that, again, the cognitive dissonance, I feel like that kind of help, that, that helps them justify what happens in that household a little bit, just a little, truthfully. And in this kind of scenario, in this kind of situation, that may be like best case scenario. It's like not growing up with them, not being related to them and whatever it's like legally there's nothing holding them back it is a little strange it's a little odd just based off of like their relationship with each other but like people can argue against that there's like a, a solid argument there and um, quite frankly i'm not saying that i condone it by the way before people jump on me but at the same time there are people who really like credence i let it go that's not even a battle that's worth fighting this however torn no too much this is too much. Credence really tested my limits. Really, I read the whole book. It really tested my limits. Yeah, but this book, I was like, absolutely not. This book, Torn, solidified it for me. I was like, no, this isn't, this isn't acceptable. Yeah, with Forbidden Romances, there's the whole conversation of legality versus morality. It's like the legality is like what's holding these types of books by a thread, like this specific type of Forbidden Romance. There are all sorts of types of Forbidden Romance. In fact, no, I, I lied to you before. This is not the only forbidden. Credence in this book, are, those are not the only two forbidden romances. Technically, I've read another forbidden romance, Twisted Games by Anna Huang. All right, technically that was a forbidden romance because it was between a princess and her bodyguard and they're not supposed to be together. That's different. That is different. Also, that one also has an age gap in it, but it's fine because the 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 princess she's in her 20s and the the bodyguard is in his 30s that's fine that's enough i'll get to age gaps in a second because i don't hate age gaps as a concept but yeah forbidden romances when it's like you know princess versus bodyguard or like you know mafia romances again romeo and juliet-esque type of romances i'm fine with those in fact i think i like them I may like, I haven't read that many of them, but I I think that the concept, I'm okay with the concept. So I wouldn't be opposed to reading something like that. But yeah, forbidden romances when it's just like borderline incest. Borderline, it's dancing around the concept of incest. It's not technically incest, but it, it might as well be. It might as well, like if you had to pull out, well, technically, no, shut that down. Why even play with that fire? That's ridiculous, I almost forgot. And before we start going crazy and saying, oh, it's okay because Torin didn't start catching feelings for Kenzie until she was 18. That's not true. And I have the receipts. <laughs> Listen to this. Okay, so this is from page 255. Okay, so Torin is having a conversation with somebody. I don't know who. I think it's one of his siblings. By the way, when his siblings found out that he was in love with his niecey niece, they s were a little too accepting. Like nobody in the book challenged this relationship except for the dad, who's also the best friend. I'll get to that in a second. Torin says, no, things between her and me changed a few weeks ago. It happened kind of suddenly. My mind is completely fucked over it. And then I, I, again, I don't know who this is. I'm so sorry. And then someone says, I'm sure it is. He agrees. And nothing like that happens suddenly, man. I think it's been happening for a long time. And then Torin, in her dialogue here, says, the fact that it's true makes me wonder if there really is something wrong with me. If I've been falling in love with Kenzie for years, what the hell kind of person does that make me? And I left a note. I, I highlighted the passage and left a, I left a note in my Kindle because he's like, what does this make me? And I wrote Lightning McGroomer. So, <laughs> oh look, also Lightning McQueen's on the back of my Kindle too. How on fame. Now this doesn't explicitly confirm anything, but let's be fucking honest. That whoever was talking, that person was right. You don't just magically see a minor as like a minor and then like this day of their 18th birthday, like something switches in their brain where it's like, you know what? I tap that. Still, what is he, 40? It's just... You know, when he was 30, she was an actual child. When he was her age, she wasn't born. When he was, uh, let's see, like 18, she was literally in there in your womb. Imagine being pregnant with your daughter and a bird teenager comes into your home and says, I'll take that, I'll have sex with that. No, that doesn't happen overnight. No, 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 no,
for years when she was a minor because because this, this shit does not just come it doesn't happen out of nowhere he wasn't hit with cupid's arrow in the back and suddenly his whole worldview has changed and another justification for this book that a lot of people have and by a lot of people i really mean like the goodreads reviews that were posted from like five six seven eight years ago uh, a lot of people were like it's okay because he loves her this isn't grooming because he loves her like actually is in love with her and he, he isn't using her to sexually abuse her because he loves her you know what this man is in love with do you want to know why this man loves kenzie in the first place it's because Kenzie idolized him from the day she was born, okay? Because throughout the book, which is so vile, by the way, because it's like, why does this need to be part of the book? But I digress. Throughout parts of the book, there are little blurbs at the beginning of every chapter that flash back to when Kenzie was a child, whether that be literally the day that she was born or back when she was like eight or nine. They could be from when she was like 13. Point is, it's like, it shows the relationship between Kenzie and Torin through different points of her life. You know, really emphasizing the fact that he was there for her and he raised that girl. And she, throughout all of these little flashbacks, it is clear that Kenzie idolized him. Torin was there for a lot of big events that Kenzie had in her life because I didn't mention this before but Kenzie's parents Asher and Ember they were famous musicians and so they were touring a lot and when they would go on tour Torin would babysit for long amounts of time. Sometimes her parents would miss out on things there was this one chapter that emphasized that the, the first time that Kenzie had a period and Torin was the only person that was there for when she was going through this life-changing event, you know? Because periods suck. Ugh, first periods are the worst, man. I remember mine. We don't have to, we're not, we're not going to talk about it, but I'm like, I'm just saying, I'm like, yeah, that's a core memory. That's core memory shit right there. And Torin was there for pretty much all of those core memories. Kenzie has always idolized them. There was even this one point where Torin was in jail for assault and Kenzie was writing letters to him. She was 10 at the time, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she was 10 years old and she was writing letters to Torin saying like, you know, I still love you. I can't wait to come. I can't wait for you to come back. And da -da 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 frankly, throughout Kenzie's entire life, Torin could do no wrong. This unconditional love that Kenzie has given Torin has just made him love her in return. Like, because Torin honestly believes that he's a screw up because he doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have children. He just feels like he just has no direction in life. And he has like a drinking problem. And again, he was literally in jail for the assault in and out of jail. It's like, he really feels like a fuck up in life and Kenzie has been the only person, allegedly, that has loved him unconditionally throughout all of his misfortunes. That's not a basis for love. You want unconditional love? Get a dog! He does have a dog. He rescues dogs, by the way. That's another thing. People are like, oh, but Torn's okay because he rescues puppies. I don't give a fuck. Oh, he rescues puppies, so that's okay. What? I don't care about that. I don't care. Like, I, like, like, genuinely, that, is, that has to be the dumbest reason. The dumbest reason. They're like, Tor's not a bad guy. He's, he saves kittens and puppies. But that doesn't justify anything in my head. What? I'm getting a headache. I'm kidding. I, 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 I've got a migraine. Overcompensate by 21 Pilots. That's a great song. Listen to it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't give a shit. Sorry, my grandma's calling me now. Sorry about that. Granddaughter duties come first. But yeah, I just kind of want to talk about age gaps for a second though, because I think that a lot of people think that I care just about the age gap. That's not true. Age gap romances are fine. I don't have any issues with those, especially if the younger person in the relationship is like in their 20s and the older one is like in their 30s, maybe even in their 40s, 50s, <gasps> whatever. As long as they were are, are, are well above age, I don't care. Well, you play with the 18, okay? You're just playing with the legality. You're just doing the youngest you can possibly go without people trying to call the police on you. Must they have to be 18? What is the benefit of them being 18? in this relationship like what like how does this benefit you in any no no it's because you you want to play you want to play with the fire you want to play with the fire and i can tell that you want to play with the fire and i'm going to tell you right now that, that you're going to get burned i'm not letting people get away with that i don't even care anymore i don't care about the legality i don't care about that um it's about the morals it's about the principle there is absolutely nothing wrong with the younger person being in their 20s or hell being in their 30s but mainly the 20s thing i'm like what is wrong with the younger person being in their 20s 
in these age gap relationships like why can't that be a thing and that is a thing i know there are people out there who write age gaps and that that is exactly what they do and i'm okay with those i haven't read them personally so you know can't 100 percent endorse it because i haven't read it but i the concept though I'm okay with that. I think a lot of people have this opinion about Torn by Carrie and Cole. They have this opinion that like this is romanticizing grooming. This is textbook grooming. He knew her from the day that she was born. He was there. He raised her from the day that she was born. Like that is that is my biggest issue about this book. I feel like I would have a completely different opinion about this book if that wasn't being hammered home so much throughout the entire book. Like they don't let you forget that they have known each other since the day that she was born. It's like, how can you even enjoy, like genuinely enjoy the romance in this book when that is a constant reminder throughout the book? I'm like, I can't, so you can't even just like tune it out and pretend that that's not even like a thing in the book. It, that's quite literally the most prominent thing about the book. Oh, well, he raised me. He helped raise me. This is a bad idea. Seeing you tonight. It's a bad idea, right? That's not what Olivia Rodrigo was talking about! <laughs> and I genuinely do believe that this book does romanticize the grooming aspects of this because let's look at books like Lolita, for example. Because here's the thing, when it comes to age gap romances like this, where it is very, very taboo, it is very questionable at best. I think that you can write about stuff like this. I'm not saying that you absolutely shouldn't. I'm okay with Lolita existing as a book. And here's why. I think when it comes to Lolita, a lot of people who read Lolita walk away from Lolita not thinking that the relationship is okay. People don't read Lolita because they think this is an epic love story or a great forbidden romance. Like that's, I don't think that's what people are categorizing the book as mentally because the narrator in Lolita, very unreliable, very deranged. And it's clear that his line of thinking is very skewed. I think that intellectuals who read this book can read the book and know damn well that the actions that are being portrayed in this book are wrong, but you can still enjoy the book. That's okay. Like that's, that's my just like and now some people really don't like Lolita because they just think that the whole concept as an entirety whether it's satire or whether it's supposed to be like whatever whatever for whatever reason even if the book is not condoning it right they still think that like the concept shouldn't be written, written about and that's an opinion that people are allowed to have and I'm not gonna sit here and tell them that they're wrong for thinking that but I think that Lolita does a better job at portraying this kind of relationship because it's not supposed to be glamorous. It really isn't. It's not, this isn't some Romeo and Juliet story, okay? This guy was a creep. He was a pedo and we should not be condoning that kind of behavior in that kind of relationship. But with Torn, I'm not getting the same vibe. Nothing in the book, nothing in the dialogue states or expresses any sort of distaste for the relationship. And like I said earlier, most of the characters, almost all of the characters actually scratch that, are not challenging this relationship. Again, when Torn's siblings hear that Torn loves Kenzie, they see nothing wrong with it. They're like, the heart wants what it wants. Good luck with that, brother. What? Don't get me started with Kenzie's friends. Kenzie's friends are just, they're totally okay with it because they're 18 years old too. And they're like, oh, hot older guy. Love that for you. Go, go Kenzie. And like I said, the only other, per the only person in the book who actually says what the fuck is the dad. And he, the interesting part about the dad being the one to talk about this, it's like all of the points that the dad made in the book when he was confronting Kenzie and Torin, like separately, he did it separately. But like when he was confronting specifically Torin though, he was saying everything that I was thinking the entire time that I was reading the book. That is your goddaughter. That is your niece. You helped raise her. You babysat her. You changed her diapers. How could you do this? I'm your best friend. How on earth could you possibly in your sick mind be okay with this happening. I just can't even for the like, I cannot. It's just, it's so bizarre. Like, like I said, Asher, the dad, he says everything that I was thinking, everything. And I was like, finally, somebody with a brain. <laughs> Cause I was, I was getting very, very concerned because Torin was like so worried about his reputation. Yet every single person who eventually found out about the relationship seemed to be okay with it. For the most part, relatively speaking, again, with the exception of the dad. And I was like, um, 
what? And then later down the line, towards the end of the book, towards the ep- excuse me, towards the epilogue, whatever, the dad does fold like a fucking lawn chair and was like, you know, guys, I can't say that I approve, but I really want my daughter and my best friend back in my life, so... I'm gonna give you my blessing. Grow a spine challenge. Impossible, apparently. Nobody, with the exception of the dad, challenged the relationship the entire time. And that's why I think that this book is romanticizing. And you know how it is being the person with like the one differing opinion. You know, it's really hard to really stick with your guns when everybody around you is is saying the complete opposite thing of you you know it's like at a certain point it's like you just get tired of fighting you accept it you force yourself to accept it because it's just easier it's an easier life to live than to stand by your morals and i totally understand it and so it's like yes i am so upset that the father in this scenario he just did not have a backbone to save his goddamn life but oh my god I almost forgot there's this one part of the book where Torin was arguing with the father because Torin was like saying, oh, not, not Torin, excuse me, the father was like again saying like, you know, you helped raise her, you changed her diapers, you babysat her, how could you do this, da 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 Torin's rebuttal to that, by the way, I almost forgot to mention this, Jesus Christ was, yeah, well you were on tour and you left your baby girl with me. You practically gave her to me. It's not my fault that I was there. And I had to be the one to hold, like, to to keep up with her emotions, to give her her emotional needs. I was like, whoa, that's not the serve you think that is. He didn't give you his daughter like that, you sick fuck. I was very appalled by that. I worry about people who genuinely hold this belief. Oh, well you neglected her. You didn't give her the emotional attention that she needed, so I did it for you, and now this is your fault. There's just so much wrong with this book, and like I said, there are so many Goodreads reviews. I was reading them, and I was just very, very concerned. A lot of people are just saying like, oh, this is a great romance. I loved the romance between the two characters, and da 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 I, I'm gonna be honest, you know, some people were even like fighting or combating against people who were negatively reviewing this book, being like, well, if you don't like it, then just walk away. Like, why go out of your way to leave such a negative re review? Right? Why am I taking time out of my day to make a YouTube video about this? You're not gonna take the high road on this one. I never properly finished that sentence, so I just wanna say, um, if you're trying to take the high road, because I spent so long talking negatively about a book. You're over here trying to tell me that I'm being a bully and I'm being this and that. Well, I'm not saying that people are doing that to me specifically, but it's just, it's really fascinating to see people justify and excuse a relationship between a girl and the man that had helped raised her since birth like you're you're trying you're you're justifying that because of legal reasons it's like oh well it's legal da, 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 da. and you're completely throwing morals out the window when it comes to that but then when it comes to negatively reviewing said book about this suddenly we need to have morals. We need to have ethics. We need to be respectful. We we need to ha we need to remember our values. Wait a minute. It's this. I'm sorry. If you're trying to compete in the morality Olympics when you are justifying and you're okay with this kind of relationship, you're losing. You already lost. Go home. <laughs> you are quite frankly the last person to be competing in the morality olympics sit this one out by the way do you want to know what kenzie's first word was when she was a baby tour your wife's first word when she was a baby was your name i can't do this i like i'm sick no 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 because there's so many elements in this book that's like icky and it's like how can you read this book and just like be okay with it. When you're constantly being thrown those reminders, how can you possibly just look at this as just like a cute love story with a little bit of forbidden tabooness thrown in there? A little? The whole thing's taboo. The whole thing should be illegal, but it's not, historically speaking. We can't let the law be our moral compass here. Segregation. <laughs> segregation was legal. Oh, I bet you don't think segregation's cool, but once upon a time, it was legal. Slavery was once a time, slavery was legal. Slavery is still legal in some places, if we're, if we're being honest, but I'm, we're not going to get into that today. Slavery in the United States, illegal in specific contexts, 
we can go in, in we we could talk for hours about the prison system and how that's basically just a repackaged version of slavery but we're not getting into that we're not getting into that that's not what this video is about point is is that there's a lot of fucked up things that have been legal that aren't legal anymore like i'm sorry that the law hasn't catched up with grooming yet but that doesn't mean that it's okay it's weird and it's like another thing it's like i worry about the people who actually like genuinely unironically enjoyed this book because it's like what if this happened to somebody you knew what if, this, what if this happened to your daughter? What if this was your cousin, your sister? What if this was somebody that you genuinely cared about? If you saw this exact scenario play out with somebody you knew and loved and cared about, would you be okay with it? And if you are, stay away from me. Stay away from me. You're weird. You're weird. You're weird. I don't know why I was so scared of, to make this video. I'm not scared. You're fucking weird. You're weird. And, and you know what? And I'm tired of acting like you're not. You are. I'm not a prude. You're just a fucking weirdo. You're a weirdo and somebody needs to call you out for it. I'm sorry, somebody needs to say it. This isn't 2016 anymore. Get your head out of your ass. You're weird. You're a weird fucking person. I'm sorry. Be glad I'm not calling you a pedophile. Because there's people out there who, who genuinely believe that if you read this book, you're a pedophile. Be glad I'm not calling you that. I am being nice. This is me being nice. You're welcome, by the way. Because I think that there's just a lot of nuances there to that conversation. And quite frankly, I'm not in the mood to fight people on that. So I'm just, I'm not even going to say that point is you're you're really fucking weird and i'm tired of acting like you're not and that's that on that so anyway that's the video jesus christ this video was so long i just had so much i had to say this book is very 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 odd i am very concerned get it together hey okay so i kind of want to rephrase and retract a statement that i've been saying throughout this entire video i've been saying that if you like the book then you're weird but i just want to rephrase that by saying that i don't it, I don't think it matters that it's a book. It's about the relationship itself and the people who are condoning this relationship. Point is, is that if you like the relationship and see nothing wrong with the relationship, then you're weird, okay? Because it doesn't matter if this is a book or a TV show or a movie, or it doesn't matter the medium, okay? It's not about it being a book. I just wanted to clarify that because I didn't want people coming coming after me for that okay it's about the relationship not about the fact that it's a book for me at least forbidden romances are fine I, that's not where my issue is i really just have a, a specific issue with this book specifically there's some people who just generally are just like absolutely no to these types of forbidden romances i'm okay with credence existing the, the book you know the the step uncle and the step cousins i'm okay with that existing i again don't condone it I don't endorse it. I would not recommend it to anybody. I honestly like telling people to read the book because I want them to be as scarred as I was. Because I think for the longest time, I could not even rate Credence. I couldn't even give it a rating because I was just like, what the fuck did I just read? So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video though. If you liked the video, cool. Subscribe if you want. I don't care. I've all the links to my social medias would be down in the description. My Goodreads is down there too if you want to see other stuff that I rate sometimes. I have to return something from Amazon. Amazon gave me, I bought headphones used or like, like new, in like new condition. I bought wired earbuds, like new condition from Amazon. I opened the box, crusty as disgust it was just disgusting i was like these are not like new condition these are disgusting and filthy and you're gonna give me my money back and so i i gotta go return that thanks for watching the video sorry for disappearing for a couple weeks that's that's on me my bad my fault okay bye